and welcome to another episode of 72 Pin Connector in person. In oh. person! We're live! It's Saturday night. It's actually Friday night, but that doesn't bring us well. It's some night of the week. It's a night! With us today, we have the wonderful Tom Webster. Good evening, everyone. Adam Jordan. Hey! And myself, Eric Fine. So, how have you guys been this week? Good. Good. Really good. How have you been? How was your trip? It was fun. Let's say that flying through Detroit in the middle of the winter <laughs> is never a good idea. <laughs> did you meet RoboCop? No. No, I did not, luckily. <laughs> uh, we had delays leaving Seattle. We had delays leaving Detroit. We had cancellations leaving Detroit. We oh. got screwed because a pilot got stuck in Colorado. Nice. It has been all sorts of fun, and I stayed right off of 8 Mile overnight. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh. Nice and safe. And I was shocked because, you know, 8 Mile, everyone's looking dirt bad. Yeah. It was really nice. Sheridan was it? In. Best Buy right there. Didn't look like it had bars on the window, so. Huh, that's usually a good sign. Yeah. Now, don't get me wrong. I didn't want to go over the hill and see what was on the other part of 8 Mile. But where I was at, I didn't feel too bad. So did you nice. see Eminem? No, no, oh, no. okay. Sadly. So how about you guys? So my gaming's been a little light. You guys get into too much this week? Uh, just yeah, I got into a, a little handful bit. of things, yeah. What you got? So, obviously Rocket League, as normal. Um, then I played the Resident Evil 7 demo. So, Tell me about that, because yeah. I failed at playing it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's really similar to how they did the PT demo. So it's not actually part of the game at all, but it, it still pertains to the story. Um, but it's very enig enigmatic. It's very puzzling. Um, not a lot goes on. Um, you explore the house. You find items. You can get a key to go here or there. Um, your, your objective is to escape the house. So um, you're looking around. You find a videotape. You plop it in the thing, and it shows um, you and two reporters go into this house. You're investigating because... There was like a murder or something there a long time ago. The house had been abandoned for a long time. So you go into the house. Uh, one guy disappears. And you're, you and the one other reporter is looking through. You're the cameraman. And you ended up finding this secret passageway that has a ladder down to like the cellar basement area. So you go down the ladder and your guy is Blair Witch style standing in the corner looking at the wall. <laughs> and you go up to turn and you, you put your hand on his shoulder and he turns around, and his eyes are all bloody, and his face is all messed up, and he falls on you. Jesus. And then you're laying on the ground, and you see somebody that you haven't seen before, uh, footsteps come up toward you. And then it blacks out, and you are apparently huh. captured, in a way. So but, it's Blair Witch through and yeah. through when it comes to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you put the video in. Um, it's It's very non-intuitive like PT was. In PT, you had certain objects you had to look at that would scrap in, the certain, photograph. in certain orders at certain times that would advance to the next step or whatever, and it's, it's very much like that. Hmm. Um, it's one of those things where it took the community a little while to figure out all the endings, because there's multiple endings based on all the stuff you have to do, which you can't just sit and figure out in an evening. Like It's something a lot of people had to uh, come together and figure out, but... um. It's interesting. It's very creepy. It's first person, unlike any other Resident Evil. So I'm curious to see what they end up doing with that. So the one thing I'll say about that I love PT. Yeah. PT, it was a puzzler for sure. I mean, there, mm -hmm. like you pointed out, there was some things that I was amazed the community keeping came up with. Right. Like there was something underneath the step at the right spot. Yeah. To, like who knows that? Yeah. But it was also incredibly creepy. Yeah. I mean, there was things about that watching people yeah. play that stream that made me just like, oh, mm. what? Yeah. It's not quite as disturbing, like psychologically just disturbing as PT was. It's more haunted house, ghosty. It's more Resident kind of. Evil instead of yeah. Silent Hill. Yeah, exactly. Okay. But it's still very, it's very tense. That's one of the things I was really worried about when I first saw the trailer for Resident Evil 7. Uh -huh. I love the direction they're going in, but me and my buddy were, were watching and... 
we both turned to each other and we said, this isn't Resident Evil. There's nothing Resident Evil about this. Yeah. Resident Evil is about, you know, infected animals and creatures and, mm -hmm. and semi-almost human things coming after you to, mm -hmm. to tear you apart limb from limb. Yeah. Silent Hill is about the psychological dread. Right. And it looks like this adds a nice, healthy dose of psychological dread. Yes. But if the demo is anything to go on, it's definitely about creepy monsters. What yeah. I think, to me, the perfect game would be the blend. It yeah. really would. Because yeah. Resident Evil, outside of Resident <laughs> Evil 2, I think it was, when the liquors first get introduced into that game, and they come busting through the window at you. Other yes. than that, I mean, I never had a moment where I was like, oh my god. Yeah. There were a couple moments in the first Resident Evil game, especially before the mansion you know, gets going and, mm -hmm. and you know what you're doing, where just the dread of the environment and mm -hmm. the, the tense music, and you just you just know something's going to happen. Basically, yeah. everything leading up to the dog coming through the window uh -huh. just fills you with terror. After that, it's yeah. basically jump scares. Well, and they right? also do that with the fixed cameras. Yeah. The fixed cameras made it better for them development-wise, as well as help them add suspense. Yeah. Because you can't just, if you look down a hallway and you see a zombie slowly shuffling towards you in typical Resident Evil fashion, mm -hmm. no one cares. Right? So, oh, look, it's, I have to walk slightly faster in the other direction to get away now. Uh, whereas, you know, with a fixed camera angle, there are plenty of times in Resident Evil where you'll walk down a seemingly empty hallway and, holy shit, there's a dude there. Yeah. Um, and like you pointed out, though, this is going first person. Yes. So that's going to... I mean, the fixed camera, they've been getting away from anyway. Yeah, but it's, it's an antique. This is uh, yet another thing, though, where they can't use that camera to help surprise, scare, startle, though. Right. One thing I really like about, um, when you look at PT, when you look at Resident Evil 7, is, especially, it seems really these two games take the idea of, okay, our game is on Twitch. People are discussing this on Reddit. They've got forums. They're chatting with their friends. They're staying up Discord servers just to run through the demo several times a day. Mm -hmm. Let's build a game as dense as possible. And I, I guess I should throw Rockstar there with Grand Theft Auto V as well. Let's build a game with as that's as dense as possible, that's as hard to get through the main content as possible, The people you know they're going to do it. You know they're going to run through Twitch streams. You know they're going to look up everything on yeah. YouTube and run it anyway. Uh -huh. Let's make this hard as shit to do. Yeah. And so you get GTA V that even, you know, just recently, a few months ago, uh -huh. people are unlocking content from the game that they didn't even know existed. Yeah. They're like, holy shit, guys, I found this thing. Mm -hmm. The biggest mystery in GTA V has still never been solved, which is yeah. the Mount Chiliad mystery. I right. think that's still a troll job by then. At this point, <laughs> it has to be. so many people have been looking for that. Yeah. If it's not a troll job, it is the most masterful puzzle to be ever put into a game. I mean, just <laughs> just a few months ago, they they finally found Bigfoot. They found Bigfoot in GTA V, nice. which was this... The only reason they found it is because this guy literally is trolling through the code and found a list of, you know, X, Y coordinates. He found a list of GPS coordinates and figured out, holy shit, you have to do these in this order to get this thing to become Bigfoot. Wow. It's but ridiculous. Was 5 or 4 the one where there was a sniper mission where you could see Bigfoot? Uh, I think yeah. I think that was San Andreas. Well, no, yeah. it was four. Because there was a modern there... one. No, it was five, because you were in the helicopter. That was in the woods, and you're oh, hunting yeah. down, like, the farm boys that just escaped. Yeah, so, I mean, they yeah. knew that he was there because of the sniper footage on that. Yes, yeah. but they didn't know how deep it went. This is, like, a power-up that you can become Bigfoot and tear oh. people apart. Oh. Yeah. Oh, it's big time. <laughs> oh. It's huge. You've That's... got to find, like, these little plants that are, they're scattered all throughout the, the countryside of the area. And you have to collect them in a certain order, and eventually you'll find a golden one out in literally the middle of fucking nowhere. And you take it, and it's a hallucinogenic thing, and mm -hmm. you become Bigfoot. Wow. It's amazing. <laughs> and then you drive in a car cruising as Sasquatch. Yeah, and I think you can fight, like, another Bigfoot or something, and I think people chase you. There's There's an entire like, semi-minigame game mode built around this thing that was just discovered. So I, I really like how these companies are now trying to, you know, they're not only accepting the fact that their games are going to be streamed, they're uh -huh. embracing it to the fullest extent. Nice. Well, and the crowdsourcing stuff's always fun. Especially, oh, yeah. um, I think it was Binding of Isaac, uh, oh, Rebirth. Yeah. They had the whole ARG. Yeah. Yeah, which... <clears throat> They cleverly avoided the data mining on that one by um, 
they updated the game once the ARG was complete with the content that the ARG unlocked. So nobody nice. could go in the code and sift out what was happening. So that was cool. But um, the Resident Evil 7 demo, I would say give it a shot. Play it. You're not going to figure out all the endings right away. So I would maybe play through it a couple of times, explore around and find as much as you can, and then go look up a video on all the things that they found and figured out, and then maybe run through it with the instructions or a guide or something to see the last endings. Because it, it gets to the point where like there's two items that you can find in like a nooks and crannies, and you put them together, and it makes like a hand like this. And then huh. when you go into look in your items, you know how you can examine things and rotate yeah. them around? Well, you examine the item and then rotate the finger to point at something, and that activates the next thing. Oh, and there's Jesus. different things you point at. So huh. I can't believe they figured it out. It's, it's incredible. Yeah, so it's games like that mm. where I'll beat it once or twice, and then for any other endings I know of, yeah. I'm just watching someone else do it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to – I have limited amount of time to be able to play games. Mm. I'm going to beat you beat you and be satisfied with what I've done and then watch that someone else do everything else that I think is kind of cool. Yeah. And even that part where you put in the VHS and you play through the little scenario of what happened in the house before, you can do something while you're doing that that affects the real world when you're when you stop watching the tape oh. that lets you get another item that you couldn't oh, get. So it's pretty cool. There's a there's one real um, actually enemy in it. So there is some contact, but there's not like there's not a lot of meat to it besides the puzzling. But it is still very tense and creepy. The atmosphere is incredible. The house looks very creepy. The graphics are great. So I'm looking forward to the full game. I'd like to check it out. I'm really hoping that the demo isn't just uh, "Hey, look, guys, we're cool again" sort yeah. of thing, and then they come out with you know Resident Evil Six number two. Because yeah. that the series just went downhill after four. It just became trash. And well, I, it's, it's I'm hard really to keep hoping. Up. Four was such a hit. It's hard it to really come was. back. Four was so good, but it was it was one and done. Everything that tried to emulate it just failed. Mm -hmm. And also keep in mind they're talking the VR when it comes to Resident Evil. Yeah. So talk the, about a shit your pants VR game. <laughs> I think the first being in first person. If they can figure out a moving mechanic, being yes. in first person allows this to be easier to adopt the VR. Where I think third person would have felt a little weird. Yeah. Now, sure. I can't even imagine what I'm going to do with Resident Evil VR. Because I ran into a patio door playing budget cuts when I was being chased by a, you know, a low polygon robot. Yeah. Who wanted nothing except to you know, fire a cartoon gun at me. If I encounter, like, some sort of horrifying Silent Hill-esque creature or Resident <laughs> Evil-esque creature, I'm going to jump out of the window. I'm yeah. going to, like, fall into the light. Tom is going to enact the scene when the dog yes. jumps into yes. the window. Yeah. I will, I will go oh, full incredible. reverse Resident Evil 1. Wow. <laughs> so, 7 demo, good. Yes, I, I'd recommend checking it out for sure. Uh, other than that, played The Walking Dead, obviously. That's what we're here for. And I played the Doom demo since Tom t speaks so highly of Doom. Doom. I, figured, I didn't know there. I didn't know there was a demo. So I didn't like, well, either. Hey, you know, there's no reason not to try a demo. So. How far does it put you in the game? It's not very far. It's like you get to that facility on the Mars area. Okay. And then you kind of clear out through some of that, and that's it. Okay. So it's not very far into the game, but at least it gives you a sense of the atmosphere and the gameplay, and all that, which is great. I had and, a lot of fun with even just the little demo. And the best thing about those demos, you see how your system performs with it. Yes, yeah. that's very important. And it runs great. It really does. It's really performant. Mm. So that's about it for me. I huh? tried you to tried. play the Resident Evil 7 demo. Yeah. Uh, it did not work. So for, for those of you on stream, right over there in that corner is my gaming PC. I don't play games out here. Because this is where I, you know, watch movies and eat dinner. I play games in my office with a nice chair, and it's great. So I use in-home streaming for everything, which works for just about everything, mm -hmm. except Resident Evil 7. Ah. Uh. So I fired up the game. I'm getting into it. It's got the graphics options. I crank everything to the max. <laughs> I notice, though, I can't click on any of the buttons in the main menu. I'm like, mm. oh, that's weird, but that's fine. I use you know the up arrows, hit enter, game starts. It's like, oh, use Wasted to move. Yeah, duh. So I, I walk forward, and it says, oh, use your mouse to look. 
what? 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 And my guy is like staring just straight. I'm just, what? What are you doing? J just work. And it's not oh, like it wow. didn't detect anything because on the main menu, my cursor is moving. Oh. It knows the mouse is there. It won't weird. accept clicks and it won't accept mouse movement in the game. That's weird. One other game has done this to me in in-home streaming, mm -hmm. but with the keyboard and not the mouse. On Final Fantasy XIII with in-home streaming, and they might have fixed this bug, mm -hmm. but when I was playing it, any time you got a text dialogue with someone talking, the keyboard stopped functioning, except for escape. But was that to help you stop playing Final Fantasy, though? Because I've heard that's not a very good Final Fantasy game. Yeah, I think, I think that was one of Square's little tells saying, hey, look, you, don't, you really don't need to. Just, just watch some guy on Twitch do it for you. It'll be fine. So I did eventually move out here and played it on the TV, which isn't bad. I mean, Final Fantasy is a beautiful cinematic game. Mm -hmm. But you know, I, I assume that Resident Evil 7 is using some sort of weird way to grab mouse input or raw values from the machine. It just, it's not working. Uh, so I will play it eventually. And but for those it was disappointing. For those who are wondering why in the hell his gaming rig is not in his office... He Five. has a Vive set up, yeah. so the gaming rig has to be here. You cannot in-home stream a Vive. It does not work. You yeah. will get sick. Yeah. You, you just <laughs> you can't do it that way. I thought about it. Yeah. But then I thought, Too much uh, delay. even even like the you know, 10, 20 milliseconds delay on a really yeah. fast network, and I've got yeah. a decent network here, uh -huh. would just ruin the whole thing. It's it's a really weird feeling when you when you turn your head and then your eyes take a second to catch up to what your body just did. It's really disorienting. <laughs> um, other than that, and I need to take a look at my, my list, um, because I forget what I played this week. I think you said you were going to try to get some uh, Doom multiplayer in. Yes, yeah. I did get some Doom multiplayer in. Oh, my list is right there on the TV. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's how I know <laughs> yeah. what you were okay. playing. So, so I did play some Doom multiplayer. <laughs> I'll cue you, don't worry. Thank you. And uh, I don't know how I feel about it. Uh, it, to me, it feels like a shitty version of Unreal Tournament, oh, which yeah. is it's pretty decent praise because I love Unreal Tournament, but it's kind of slow. Yeah, the the guns feel a little wonky, not as powerful. Everyone's a bullet sponge. It's mm -hmm. not terrible by any means. Yeah, uh, I enjoyed playing Doom's equivalent of Griffball, uh, <laughs> but it just wasn't great. And there's no way to, at least at my low level right now, uh -huh. there's no way to tag a game mode and say, I only want to play this. Because if I could yeah. just play Griff Ball the whole time, I'd love Doom Multiplayer. Yeah. But I can't. There's like, I want to kill everything, or I want to play some team games. Mm -hmm. And team games cycles you through, and they do this vote thing where they give you two things to pick from, only two things to pick from. And you can pick, you know, the team deathmatch mode or capture the flag, but I want to play Griff Ball because we just played that and it was great. Well, you don't get that option. Well, they have to be careful because the more you splinter out your player base, the worse the overall experience becomes. Yeah, it, it does, but Counter-Strike doesn't have that problem. Unreal Tournament didn't have that problem. Okay, now, those two those games... Those are much larger audiences. Yes, but <laughs> those are I mean, also... This is, this is Doom! Season. Oh, yes, yeah. but here, here's the difference. Doom. What do you think when you think Doom? The one player shoot right. the fuck out of things. When you think Unreal and you think yeah, CSGO, I guess. Think multiplayer. You, it's the multiplayer community. Yeah, yeah I, sure. I just... I wish it was better. Yeah. Um, the one thing I did love is uh, the multiplayer stat maps. So, you know, create your own levels, do your own things. So somebody created a multi-stage progression, uh, a survival mode, basically, where you can mm -hmm. upgrade your Doom guy with money you get from killing oh. monsters, which is a lot of fun. So um, me and this one guy, I couldn't talk to him because I was in-home streaming, and mics don't work on in-home streaming, which uh -huh. is a great little tidbit if you didn't know that. Um, we, we get into the game, and I upgrade my Doom guy. I'm like, oh, this will be easy. And we're both just mopping the floors with demons. And I die a couple times. Uh, but it was fantastic. Eventually, you beat all the levels, you get a BFG, and they put you in this room and they say, just shit's gonna spawn everywhere until you die. <laughs> Go for it. We <laughs> played an hour and a half before the guy quit and abandoned the lobby, and then the game closed. Oh. Like, we literally, <laughs> we spent an hour and a half in the endless room... Just <laughs> destroying demons with everything. And the hard part about it isn't surviving. That's yeah. the easy part. Because you mm -hmm. have, at this point, you have so much armor and so much health, you can just last forever. Mm -hmm. It's because you literally get down to using your fists to kill enemies. You run out of ammo so fast. So it was it was a good time. Uh, I threw in some Splunky. 
I'm starting to like that more. Yeah. I'm getting a better I've feel heard for the great content. things about it. It's good, and I've never encountered a bad level. Yeah. I've never encountered a level where I just get screwed, like mm-hmm. in most roguelikes. Nice. I have, but it's not some. It's something I should have been able to avoid. Yes. Like, you are a moron, and you didn't keep enough rope. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, well, I have to just dr- jump down and take the damage. Yeah. Hmm. Um, I don't like, and I, I, I'm learning, I'm learning the mechanics now, where if I take the golden skull thing that I really want, because it's shiny, and there's a shopkeeper in the same level, uh, he will try to shoot me. Because invariably, Ooh, this boulder, yeah. when I grab the skull, this boulder will pop off and start rolling through the level, destroying everything in its path, and it will destroy the shopkeeper's shop in some mm. portion. Hopefully it kills him. Most of the time it doesn't. <laughs> so now he's pissed because a boulder ran through and he calls me a terrorist. Will he be perma-pissed, though? Like, yes. in the instance that you kill? Okay. Yes. Oh, that yeah. I've, I have to deal with everyone. Nice. So, uh, other than that, uh, I did play The Walking Dead. Um, I have beaten it once before, uh, but we will talk about that later after this podcast. But still live, so you guys can watch. Yeah, we'll just and have a little bit of a hard break, so spoiler free, and then boom, yeah. we'll ruin the game for anyone who hasn't played it from yeah. three years ago. But don't worry, for this podcast, for the MP3 you're listening to right now, or the show you're watching right now, there will be no spoilers about The Walking Dead. We will pre-announce them, so fear not. Nice. What about you? So, traveling. So, what's the best thing to do when traveling? Nintendo. Candy Crush. Oh. Fuck you. Candy Crush. <laughs> Come on. Don't God, I hate you, Don't man. Don't do that. So, um, Pokemon Sun. A lot of it. And the nice thing is, um, her and I flying with her trade system. Literally, we hit the screen and it does NFC to each other. Oh, yeah. Nice. And you can trade. Nice. While flying. That's cool. Yes. <laughs> so I'm um, working on filling up that Pokedex, mm-hmm. and there is a shit ton. Oh, and yeah. this one, they have some um, interesting uh, mechanics. So sun and moon, so day and night cycles will determine when you find things sometimes. As well as Pokemon can call for help. Some Pokemon are only, like, they only come up when they're called for help. Like a Hackney. To, which is the pre-evolution of uh, Chansey. Okay. Mm. Only comes out during the day, and only comes out when um, being called for help from, I think it's only a Pichu. Well, at least that's the easiest, most common one. So you have to hmm. find a Pichu. Then you use an item that raises its adrenaline and makes it call for help more often. And then you literally just stand there and tank this Pichu until it eventually calls in a Hackney. It'll call in a Pichu more times than not, and you have to kill off the one it calls in because they only have two on. Mm. And then you have to wait for it to bring it in. There is one that only spawns while being called in for help while in a rainy condition. Oh. Luckily, so they didn't get rid of all the janky shit that they did before. No, it's not completely janky. Okay. Uh, there is a guaranteed area to be raining every time. So you can okay. go there. All right. So it's not like this. Well, it's not raining. There is one guaranteed <laughs> spot you can go to get it. I That's remember good. gold and silver. There was like you—you you could basically walk the same three things of grass to try to find something that had like a sit or like a five percent drop rate, mm-hmm. and you would get hours into the game, and you know, hopefully, maybe you would see one of them. Yeah. Oh, don't get me wrong. It took me, I think, good thirty forty-five minutes to catch this thing. It's very okay. low rates. Um, also, during some of these uh, escapades, I found a shiny. Oh, a fucking rat attack. Mm-hmm. <laughs> of everything to get shiny. So, so for those uh, of our viewers who don't know Pokemon very well, what's the obsession with shinies? So, ultra rare. I mean, we are talking something incredibly rare. Um, and also, uh, they raise quicker. They train faster. Okay. They get experience bonuses to them. Um, I'm not sure if they have EV point bonuses or not. But I know for sure it's experience gain. So that is also useful if you're doing EV training because you want yeah. to take them all the way up and it just goes faster. Because using rare candies, you don't get the EV points. Which, uh, right. okay, <laughs> super nerd here. So <laughs> I don't do this necessarily because it takes way too long. Every Pokemon you fight gives you special bonuses in a certain ability. So let's say, for okay. instance, you kill an Abra. Abra's going to silently raise your special attack. If you kill 250 Abras, you will get an additional special attack 
uh, ability up on your next level. So after 250, you'll get an additional one. So you can see that this takes a whole lot of work Jeez. to get a little <laughs> bit of gain. This is done by the most competitive of players, not necessarily oh, yeah. for playing through without anyone else. So these are tournament level people who go and grind Abra's for days. Yes. Okay. This is actually an individual that I met on Wednesday. A uh, really cool guy. He does competitive Pokemon. Wow. And he's really good at it. And wow. it's a whole lot of that. Hmm. So. I didn't know there was a scene for that. Oh, yeah, I watched a thing on Twitch. I watched, like, the yeah. uh, World Series, World Championships, and it's really interesting. It? Amazingly enough, it's actually the exact opposite of the Dota community. <laughs> Everyone's really happy. <laughs> they all shake hands. They all say, you know, good game yeah. and good luck. Yeah. It's, uh, it looks like a really chill community, but Everybody it is likes a thing. Po it's Pokemon. Everybody likes Pokemon. Yeah. And this one especially, it's all about being happy and willpower and blah, 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 blah. It's they <laughs> being the very best. Like no one ever was. To catch them is your real test. <laughs> What's your cause? Training. Oh, okay. All right, good. I always forget that one. <laughs> but, um, yeah, they hammered the storyline home on this. Uh, but that's pretty much the whole flight over was that. Mm -hmm. And I enjoy it. It's fun. Um, while at my old apartment in Columbus, mm -hmm. um, I rent it or I hijacked my old roommate's computer and had to get some Rocket League in. Of course. So <laughs> I played a few rounds of that felt really good he has so amd for all you amd fans out there i understand their budget they're it's budget but <laughs> my god some of the added wear that they sneak in there now granted oh, you, sh optional, you, you should pay attention yeah. and don't install it but if you do god it can hurt yeah <laughs> the gaming I, evolved thing immediately Screws up Rocket League. Oh. Yeah, I was... Input it, I, lag, stuttering frames. Really? Yeah. It oh. feels like you have a network spike. And then you'll mm -hmm. look at your ping, and it'll be 40 the whole time. Huh. Because I went over to Eric's house to play one time, and I was playing on his computer, and I'm like, I don't understand why... Like, his computer's running it fine. I don't understand yeah. why it feels so bad. Like, there was input lag, I could tell. The, it wasn't, the motion wasn't as smooth. It was kind of stuttery. Um uh, as soon as I exited out of that off the taskbar, it was immediate. It felt just like it when I'm playing at home. <laughs> why Why do these companies make value-add software? I mean, yeah. literally, where is the value added? So, I, I don't know. The one big one AMD does bundle, and I do know a use case, is like Play TV. Okay. It is their version of record what you're doing. Actually, they just came out with one. It's called Relive? Relive? Hmm. It's basically shadow play for AMD. Also, AMD's oh, integrating nice. it now, kind of like yeah. what uh, Nvidia does. Yep, it's exactly that. I that's tried nice. it; it didn't work very well. Well, every I'm not... time I'd play, I would like every two or three seconds, it would pause for a second. Ooh. Oh, yeah, that's so bad. I couldn't even play a game while it was running. So, so maybe that's just my system. Hopefully, <laughs> but it didn't work very well. Well, one of the guys we play Rocket League with, he uses the play play TV records. Yeah. And he's posted some stuff up from it, and it works mm -hmm. really well. In fact, it almost looked That's like they I... have their own server that you can upload to. Hmm. Yeah. You can search through games and stuff. It's kind of like a social media aspect to it. But that's what I used to record all my... If I record any gameplay clips. Yeah, I've got a lot of respect for the companies that say, you know, like Microsoft and, and <laughs> Sony, who say, hey... Uh, we're not gonna lock you into this. Everyone's on Twitch. I mean, for fuck's sake, just hit the Twitch button. That's why yeah. we have a Twitch button. Yeah. We're not gonna take you to, you know, Microsoft Live Gaming Network dot net dot org <laughs> or, or massive Sony stream platform dot net. No. It's just, just use Twitch. That's yeah. not out of goodwill, though. That's out of a lot of failed experiments on their end. They just realized when a platform <laughs> already works, use it. <laughs> I, I, I get the, the fear of building something on someone else's platform and having it, you know, shift out from under you. That, that's happened in the tech scene for literally forever. Mm -hmm. But for fuck's sake, it just works. Yeah. So then one more thing I played a little bit of, but I finished it, was the, uh, Walking Dead. Course. I had That's played it. the first three episodes when uh, it came out. Like yeah. to the point I played the second, I waited for the third. Oh, okay. Yeah. Did you play through them again to yes, refresh? Absolutely. Okay. Um <clears throat> and yeah. I yeah. stopped at the worst possible time because chat or episode four, it really starts to get good. And the fifth, the yeah, we'll get later. But yes, <laughs> I stopped at the worst possible time. And I have to ask right now, so since we're not in the spoiler part. Yeah. 
I know that you seem to not be a fan of point-and-click adventure games. Yeah, I, I didn't like the gameplay of, of The Walking Dead. At any point, did the story, for you, did the story get immersive enough to where it was okay? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's like I really wanted to figure out what the story was, but it still kind of felt like a chore to have to play through another episode, but it was worth it. So even for me, somebody that doesn't like the gameplay at all, I'm still glad I played through them all. So I would say everybody should try it. But it did still feel like a chore for you, though. A little well, bit. The gameplay itself, yeah. It's yeah. just kind of slow. It's kind of hard, hard yeah. to manage. And for those who have never played it, A, don't listen to the spoiler at the end. But um, <laughs> We'll tell, warn you. We'll Telltale warn you. is a point-and-click adventure company. They have made their bread and butter on giving the player very little action control. They give you a very guided paths, but Point. they'll let you go through multiple paths. Yeah. Point, click, quick time event. Yes. Point, quick time event. Chat selection, quick time event. <laughs> you the, can walk around at least, though. Yes. And, you know, the the games, the quick time events and, and the little aiming segments yeah. are the worst part of that game. Yeah. I want the game to yeah. be entirely dialogue. I could have I just sat on the couch and watched it and then picked the chat commands and been fine yeah, with it. Yeah, that part's great. But so one of the shooting... People probably like it. One of the shooting things, I had fun with this because yeah. I like shooters. Yeah. And <laughs> I realized that, so in Halo, I do this thing sweeping where, like, you just, you don't stop. You just kind of momentum through it. You can't do it on this. The game's not designed for it. Oh, but yeah. I tried. So what <laughs> happens is I pull the trigger. The gun stops. I'm not on, not, I'm not hitting. And the yeah. thing drops dead. Yeah. <laughs> it is. They understand the mechanics are so bad. That they have to give you such a buffer on the hit zone. Oh, yeah. Well, well I, I don't think... That. But I'm not knocking it, because that's yeah. not what the game's about. I, so. I don't think it's that they understand the mechanics are bad. They understand their players are bad. There's there's a big difference there. <laughs> what are you trying to say? <laughs> no, hold on, hold on. Let me, let me explain this, because it's it, it's not as terrible as, as that just well, sounded. Yeah, yeah. So, they're not building a game for people who play Call of Duty or Halo. Well, yeah. They're building a game for people who play Monkey Island and Life mm -hmm. is Strange. They're, they're yeah. building something for... Games that typically have never employed any sort of action element into them, right? Mm -hmm. And Monkey Island, the sword fighting was an insult duel. <laughs> I mean, it was it was amazing, yeah. but it never took anything more than you know just choosing an option mm -hmm. for The Walking Dead and hitting something regardless of where you aim. Yeah, it's it's a little cheesy, but it's like all of the action segments in Final Fantasy VII. Mm -hmm. Right, they're really shitty and they're almost impossible to fail because it's an RPG, and they right. understand that RPG players are playing this, not mm -hmm. FPS people. Yeah, it makes well, sense. But I mean, it was to a degree. Like if you were just shooting the building a mile off, yeah, they didn't yeah. give it to you yeah. because there were still death parameters. Yeah, right. But yeah, um, uh, that's all that. I won't go any further into that. All right, but. Got some news topics. We do have some news topics. A little light, given towards the end of the year, things kind of slow down, but um, we did get some kind of big news out of Nintendo. Yes. They're uh, finally breaking into the mobile scene. Finally did. I think it was December 15th was the launch day of Super Mario Runner. Was it Runner Run. or Super Mario Super Run? Mario Run. Run? Run. Run? Okay. Yeah. It's a runner <laughs> is the game. Genre versus... Yeah. Yes. So, um, for those who don't know, this is a full-featured game. This is a $10 buy-it-if-you-want-it game. It is a endless runner. I use air quotes because it's not really. But your character... Yeah, com it it, huh? It has an ending. Technically, yeah. 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 <laughs> it, um, you're running to the right constantly. You uh, tap the screen to jump. Um, there's areas where you wall jump, go back and forth, can mm -hmm. actually reverse your direction because of it, and then come back. But, and that's pretty much the game. It's, they're taking the idea, the core mechanic of Mario is jumping. And people are not happy. So, the, the, from what I've read, the core game, if you blaze through it, it can be completed in about an hour. There's no extra DLC. You know, the, the mm -hmm. game is, you get the first couple of levels as a demo, and you can do a you know an in-app purchase of ten bucks to get the rest of the game. Mm -hmm. And if you if you're a gamer and you play this like a game made for gamers, you'll complete it in an hour. 
Now, you won't get all the, you know, everything and bonus stuff and special yeah. coins and all that. Yeah. That takes a couple hours. But it's oh. it's a small game. But Nintendo didn't design this to be, you know, run through like Super Mario World. Yeah. And it's it's right. not a, you know, plunk down on the couch and spend like all day playing this. Yeah. yeah, this is a, I've got five minutes, so I want to, I want to play some Mario. Which but, it really works for. And also, there's challenge, or high scores. Compete yeah. with your friends. High scores, challenges. Yes. It was meant to be played through multiple times, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes, very much so. Yeah, this isn't a, you beat 1-1, one, one, you're done. You never want to go back. You don't want to touch it again. You beat 1-1, one, one, but you missed a lot of coins. You think you can get coins better, maybe get it a little faster, jump higher on the flagpole. I mean... Mm. It's going to be a game where I think in the end you will see people competing to get perfect runs. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. But the uh, mobile game community are um, not typical console gamers all the time. Right. It's a lot of people who like to go on the App Store and peruse for free games. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They find Nintendo has a game out there. They download it. They're excited. They see the first three levels like, oh, this is pretty. This is fun. And then it hits them. This is ten dollars. Why in the hell am I buying a mobile game for ten bucks? Back in my day. <laughs> <laughs> so to me, it was it's frustrating hearing the outrage. I'm yeah. tired of people viewing mobile gaming so much separately and like detached from the actual gaming community. Yeah, right. I like Nintendo's <clears throat> attempt at saying, "Listen, this is a fucking video game that we put a lot of work into, yeah. and we are going to market it and sell it like one." Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Nintendo, they're they're getting a whole lot of flack right now from people who aren't gamers or people who are mobile gamers exclusively. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the people who put a lot of time and effort into, uh, you know, uh, the Angry Birds games and stuff like that. They, Clash of Clans. And... Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not discounting that. I'm not saying they're not real gamers, but they don't own a PS4. They don't have a gaming rig at home. They don't have a console. Their their gaming that they get is on their iPhone or iPad. And the markets have maneuvered in such a way that if your app is $5, it's the most expensive thing in the store because yeah. all games max max your mobile game is 2 bucks. Nintendo comes along and they say, "Hey, we want $10 for Mario." Mm. Yeah. And they should absolutely get ten dollars for Mario. Frankly, you know, as as a guy who makes software, I'm appalled at the prices in most app stores. Yeah. I mean, uh, from a consumer side, I get it because it's really easy to get someone to throw you a buck, right? Yeah. Not even well, yeah. McDoubles are a buck anymore. <laughs> <laughs> right. Most most apps cost less than a fucking McDonald's cheeseburger. Right. That's a problem. Yeah. People are doing this for a living. And especially video games, they, they take a whole lot of time, a whole lot of QA, and a whole mm -hmm. lot of love to make. Uh, and if you don't know the industry, most game developers get paid shit wages for the work yeah. they do. Because they work long hours uh, for people who don't necessarily like them very much. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a hard job. And if they go into the private sector from gaming, mm -hmm. they'll get a significant, like, 33% pay raise yeah. by getting out of video games. They do it because they love the... they, they love video games. Um, so Nintendo should absolutely stick to their guns. Ten dollars is a a fine price to ask for this, and I really hope uh, this starts more mobile game developers on the road of saying, "Yeah, yeah I think my game's worth five bucks." Yeah. Well, even the Telltale games, um, they're on mobile, yeah. and it's the same game, and it's cheaper on mobile than yep. it is on Steam. Same game because they know they know people will pay twenty bucks on Steam. For the Walking Dead game, mm -hmm. but they, they will, will not, not pay, pay dollars on mobile. Yeah, and it's it's a shame to a degree because mobile games, while it is a really nice platform, because of the price, the games come out either incredibly shitty or fractured down or out to all these pieces for microtransaction profits. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's one of two ways most of the time. I mean, there are occasionally the gems in the rough, like Angry Birds, honestly. Fantastic mobile game, came Angry out for Birds. free. Yeah, fantastic. Full yeah, featured, great. good game. Oh, yeah. But you get other games like um, your pay and pair of weight games, like your Clash of Clans and stuff like that, yeah. where you have an upgrade going for 26 hours. Or you can use this <laughs> in game currency right over here that you can buy 100 of for two bucks. Yeah. And your thing is done now. 
Yeah, and, and most of the time that's too much, though. <laughs> we could talk about that all yeah, day. <laughs> that's, that's probably a good idea to stay away from that. But with Super Mario Run, it doesn't do any of that. It just says, hey, yeah. you've, you've got the first couple levels. You know how the game plays. You like it, right? You want the rest? It's ten bucks. We won't bug you again. Yeah. It's kind Unless, of treat it like a demo at that point. Yes. There's one thing to bug you with, though. And this is the one thing that people have a gripe with that I can't talk them off of. Internet connection. Oh, yeah. That's bullshit. It's yeah. absolute bullshit. Yeah. They are so scared of piracy at this point. They have made it to where constant internet connection is required. I don't know to the degree if it will kick you off mid-level. But from what I've heard, it is more than the initial load-up check. Ugh. I, I just... I, I don't get it. It's literally not that much of a problem, especially on the iOS platforms. Yeah. On sure. Android, I get it. I really get it. Because you can, you know, throw a rock and hit an APK store that, mm -hmm. you know, gives away uh, paid apps. Right. It's loaded with malware, but, you know, people don't care about yeah. that. It's it's value-add malware. Well, it's, it hasn't hit Android yet, has it? No. no. So maybe they were preparing for it for when it does. Absolutely. And then they've got that taken care of. But then also, they're... This completely surprised me when pokemon go went out their stock went through the roof and they only had a partial interest in it yeah mm -hmm. it was niantic and the pokemon company and they have like what a third share in pokemon company or something yeah. like that yeah this is nintendo and this actually sold well and the backlash from this had their stocks dropping 11 percent. yeah wow. nintendo came out and they said their their stockholders are yelling at them saying hey Make more Mario levels. Charge more ten dollars. Yeah. And Nintendo said, "But it's done. What do you guys want from us? It's it's done. Yeah. It's over. It's like they came out at the end of Ferris Bueller. Like they they came out in their bathrobe at the end of Mario Run, and they go, "It's over. Go home. Find <laughs> another game. Go back to Clash of Clans. This is all there is." Yeah. And, and the fans want more. Right. And the stockholders really want more. Yeah. But I get it. They have finished the game. Let it be done. And you keep a franchise healthy by making <clears throat> them want more. Yes, Not exactly. because you give them more than they want. You give them right. less than what they feel they need. Yeah. Oh, I shouldn't say that way. More. The, they want more. Yeah, you give them less than what they need. It's a different yeah. story. But if the game's already not getting good reception because people aren't happy with it, uh, maybe they should make some more levels. Maybe that would help them out a little bit. I, if they do, it can't be for free. Yeah. It, it can't be ten bucks, right? But but you know maybe a five dollar level pack. Time out, time out. Are we talking talking now map packs on the mobile platforms? Yes, but it has to be a <laughs> DVD that you buy and pop in your system. <laughs> so it's the Halo Two approach. <laughs> yes. Wow. Yes, we're gonna have Mario map packs. God, when map packs start coming to the phones, I swear to God, I'll never play another fucking mobile <laughs> the, game. The new Doom DLC is a map pack. I, I got really excited because on, on the front page of Doom, which I, I hate that they advertise it, but I get why they do it, is to get the eyeballs. It's like, yeah. Doom DLC, and I got super excited. I was like, fuck yes, I get to you know slaughter more demons. And I, I click on it, and I'm ready to you know throw my wallet at the screen, and they go, well, you get like six maps. <laughs> I, I just don't give a shit. Yeah. It's not good enough to pay for. Really, you could have given me this without a multiplayer mode. I would have been fine. Wolfenstein worked without it. Yeah. I still think Doom probably hit a higher chord than Wolfenstein. Though. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, a little bit. But, hitting on Steam, have you guys, have you all um, blown your entire paychecks yet? No. I have avoided it. And, and I was about to not avoid it today. <laughs> but... Uh, Steam was down for almost three hours today. Yeah, I heard about that. I was trying to send someone a link to the Stanley Parable, which uh, if you haven't played the Stanley Parable, you absolutely <laughs> should. Well, that was a direct look at camera. Stern talking to. <laughs> I've totally this, played this that. This is yeah, not a paid I endorsement. Agree. I'm just a happy customer. <laughs> God damn it, Tom. Uh, so I was trying to send it to someone, because uh, I want to say it's like three... Yeah, it's right there on the list. It's three dollars. Uh, and I was trying to send it to someone to say, hey, Steam sale's on. You should probably buy this because it's a fun rob. Yeah. Uh, and I kept getting, like, hey, you got an error. Here's a weird error code to send to Valve. And I was like, um, no, nah, just refresh, thanks. I thought my network was screwed up because my network's always screwed up. <laughs> no, Steam was dead. Everything. Wow. Completely down. 
store, friends, logging in, all of their game servers, the whole thing, uh-huh. gone. I don't know why yet, mm-hmm. but everyone freaked out. Uh, Valve lost approximately $7 trillion. Whew. Hash, hours, hash, hash, three hashtag hours. bullshit number. Yeah, yeah, no, that's, yeah that's, that's well, like, that's yeah. a complete fabrication. But it's Valve. There's a sale going on. Can you imagine the amount of money they lost by the store just being inaccessible? Yeah, that's, imagine that's imagine bad, if bad Amazon timing. went yeah. down, you know, during Christmas on Black Friday, right? Because that's what this is for Steam. That's mm-hmm. what this is for Valve. I mean, it's it's Steam sale time. Everyone's there. So, and all the Steam sales, Steam gets a little rough when they launch it because everybody scrambles to their computers and wants yeah. to see the sale. So, like, the first 30 minutes, hour tops, you know, the site's slow. Sometimes the prices aren't updated yet. But three hours is a lot longer of a time. The, yeah. the worst one was um, Summer 15 because of the game. Everyone was doing that little uh, robot game where you're like, Oh, oh yes. I forgot about that. So, I mean, I remember, like, it, you would have to just keep hitting the page because you were just getting denied. Mm-hmm. I'm wondering if that's why they stopped doing those little games. Is because they got DDoSed by people playing the stupid yeah, little game. Their their uh, protection came up. It's like, hey, this is a DDoS underway. Let's shut down. Yeah. Which um, I have heard uh, one person I talked to who had read up a little on this. The initial belief was it's just a straight DDoS. Mm-hmm. So hopefully it's just a DDoS for the sake of people trying to see they can do it. Yeah. And not a DDoS because people understand this is a Steam sale. Let's get this network down so we can try to get in and get some numbers. Yeah. Mm. That, would be, <laughs> that would be bad. Because there's a lot of numbers getting thrown there right now. I'm so sure. we'll see. Valve Valve oscillates between we're going to be completely transparent with something. Yeah. Like they, they have had outages before they, where they've come out and said, hey, here's what happened. Here's why it happened. Here's why it's not going to happen again. Yeah. And they've given nice technical details. Or we could get the valve that literally doesn't talk to us for years until they're like, uh, we've got a cool game coming out. You should probably just buy it. What is it? I don't know. It doesn't matter. (laughs) Hey, guys, do you remember Dota? Yeah, we bought that. What? (laughs) You did what? But on a lighter note, the Steam sale is going on. Yes, it is. And there are a lot of good games on sale. So, should we get into our recommendations? Yeah, let's get into some of those. What yes, people right. can uh, throw their, uh, hopefully, some Steam gift cards at. Because I will honestly say, if you don't know what to get someone, and they play PC games, get them a damn Steam card. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Money well spent. I'm hoping. But um, I think the one that I sho- uh, was really shocked with, price-wise, is Doom. Has mm. been cut substantially. Yeah, yep. that's um, not even that... That hasn't been out that long. Watch Dogs 2. That yeah. game has been out less than a month on PC. And it is a 33% off right now. <sighs> Solid. And uh, good. Prison Architect, 75% off. Oh, nice. that's nice. And that's a fun game. For those who like uh, games kind of like uh, The Sims mixed with SimCity. Okay. Yeah, that's a good way to put that. Um, It's not as much in-depth control like you get in The Sims. It's more of a SimCity on a personal scale. Mm-hmm. Only it's a prison. Yeah. Where you make uh, electric chairs and all fun stuff. But it's seven forty nine right now. And if you like simulation based games that are a little quirky, um indie ish, so it's a good game. Yeah. Nice. I, I played it in early access and I played it up until it became a real legit game and it's it only got better. That was one of the few times I've been very pleasantly surprised by early access. I have two I can count, and both are on sale right now. Prison Architect and Kerbal. Oh, Kerbal, Ah. I forgot about that. Yeah, (laughs) that was early access, wasn't it? Yeah, both of those, um, if you are into simulations of any any kind, if you're into physics simulations, definitely pick up Kerbal. Yeah. I have a good processor, because there's a shit ton of physics computations go on in that. Oh, Oh, yeah. I can only imagine. It's really good, too. (laughs) So uh, there was a, uh, and I, I wish I knew his name, there's a streamer on Twitch that streams Kerbal, and he's not a scientist, but he goes on Wikipedia and learns all this stuff and then applies it to Kerbal and explains it while he's streaming. Nice. He's like, these are called this thing and they do this and they, they can do this thing, but they're really used in this manner. And he breaks down the entire, like all the components of a ship he's building. Nice. Really cool stuff. That's interesting. Also, is a lot to say on the game they made. Yes. Oh, yeah. Even though, from everything I've heard, they've got some bad treatment of employees over there. 
Do they? Yeah, they had uh, a lot of, I guess, uh, employees quitting. Ooh, and that's not good. Yeah, because I guess there was a big push to get shit done and yeah. really bad hours and environment. Kind of what you were talking yeah. about earlier. Yeah, so typical game industry bullshit. Especially smart up with a lot of cash that came in initially and probably gradually slowed down just because there becomes a critical mass of people that at a certain point you've saturated the market about as much as you're going to. Yeah, that's true. So another game that's on sale that we have uh, waxed poetically about uh, is The Witness. Yes. Uh, so if you, <laughs> we've gone on and on and on about this game. <laughs> if you don't know about The Witness, go back a couple episodes. We talk about it in depth. Uh, it's 20 bucks right now, so pick it up. That's the heaviest it's been discounted so far. Yes. That's a, that's a pretty big discount for as much game as you get out of that, for sure. Yeah, that's... Oh, my God. Uh, one I want to yeah. recommend heavily is Soma. So Soma is made by Frictional Games, the makers of Amnesia, The Dark Descent. Uh, Amnesia was revolutionary for the horror genre when it came out. Its story was so-so, but it wasn't really much about the story. Soma is kind of the opposite. So not everybody liked Soma as much as they thought they would, but it's one of the best games I've played in a long time. So Soma has an incredible sci-fi story. Uh, there's philosophical elements to it. It's going to make you think. Um, deals with like cloning and identity, those kind of themes. Um, hmm. I can't recommend it enough. That was one of the better stories I've played in a while. And it's coming from the studio whose last game has incredible horror atmosphere and subpar story. This game, it still has the incredible horror atmosphere, but the, the horror parts of the gameplay aren't amazing, but it's still, it's very scary. Uh, a lot of dread. The the sound, the visuals the are all incredible. Yeah, the environment, the sound, the, the visuals are incredible. The enemies are really cool. They're they're scary. I can't recommend this game enough. It's ten forty nine, which I think is the cheapest it's been too. I remember when you were playing through this yeah. because there were some talking points that got brought up in our chat. Yes, and it was like, "What the fuck?" I, like this is yeah. some weird. I got concepts. to this point, and you get to make a decision, and I stopped the game. I was Jesus. like, "I can't make this decision." I like I paused the game, and I just had to think. I just thought about it. I didn't even keep playing that day. I stopped playing that day because it just it made me think so much. And I, huh. it was it was really interesting. So definitely pick that one up for sure. If you like horror games or if you're interested in in story driven experiences, for sure. The best way I can explain the environment of Soma is take a cyberpunk Bioshock and make it a horror game. Yeah, and it's it's awesome. It's a space station underwater. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's a good way to put it. So. Um, and even if you don't like horror games, there are mods you can install that make all of the enemies non-combative. So you can just kind of walk past the horror parts and experience all the story. So hmm. huh. that's also an option. And there's also um, some other stuff on sale, which is kind of one of those, like you said, it's good to play. It's just a really good story to it. Mm -hmm. And you have like Firewatch right now. I want to play that. I might pick that up this sale. That is on sale. For those who don't know, it's also been slated to be turned to film. Oh, really? Which is interesting huh. because this is a very, very much a story game. It yeah. is a uh -huh. walking simulator, story-based game. Mm. Uh, I've heard lots of good things. I haven't played it yet. I intend on picking it up because I want to play through it and see if the story is as good as what it's been sold as. Mm. That'd make a good group game. Yes, actually, at a later point, that would make a really good one to play through. Nice. And there's also another good recommendation for me is Civ 5. Civ 6 just came out. Yeah. If you know you like Civ games, get Civ 6. If you don't know what the hell a Civ game is, <laughs> figure out if you like the idea of a slow-paced strategy game, and then take a look at Civ 5 right now. $7.50, tons of DLC, you can get it all right now. Everything bundled up for 20 bucks. Yeah, I've it's... heard people put an insane amount of time into Civilization. You, you know the, the <laughs> phrase, one more turn, yeah. or one more level? Yeah. It comes from Civ. So if it's the game that you might like and you need a time sink, oh my God. it will fill that time slot. <laughs> so Civ 5, three years ago, had a free weekend. Mm -hmm. 
I buy, or I download it, I start playing it, I get into the middle of a match. And me being me, RTS's turn-based strategy is all the same. I max amount of enemies, max amount of just regular base NPCs on the biggest map possible. Yeah. <laughs> Each turn to simulate through took so long that I would do push-ups and sit-ups between. Because that's <laughs> what it go. took to simulate them. Nice. And by the time that free weekend was up, I'm, I bought it. Because yeah. it was on sale, too. Then you were too sore to play because you've been doing yeah. so many push-ups. <laughs> well, no. He like, was buff. <laughs> one game. One game. I didn't get all the way through. I got to the point I was rolling and I wouldn't be stopped. Yeah. 24 hours. One match. Wow. Yeah. So you know how, how with chess, if you want a really long-running game, you can do correspondence chess where you literally mail your moves to the other person across the world. They open up the letter like, oh, he moved here. You can play Civ in a correspondence fashion. So you have like a central controlling server uh -huh. and you just, you send your move, you're like, I'm doing this. And then when everyone has sent their move in and there's like a timeout value of a few hours, uh -huh. then the game, you know, simulates that. Nice. So you can That's have, cool. you can have games with tons of people where, and you don't have to sit at the same computer at the same time. That's nice. And get through a big game. I, I would like to see more games that implement that. That's, that's pretty cool. I've put so much time into Civ. It's not even funny. <laughs> um, mine was like in, in the Civilization 1 and 2 era. Yeah. I loved Civ 5, but 1 and 2, 2 especially, was just awesome. So definitely pick that up. But if you're into walking simulators like Firewatch, uh -huh. you can pick up the Stanley Parable on Steam right now <laughs> for $3. <laughs> I've actually, I haven't played it, and I know that's a crime, especially because it's so cheap, so I might as well pick it up. It's but, so good. Yeah, I've heard really good things. I received Lots it as a gift. Lots of breaking the fourth wall. It's supposedly hilarious. And at one point, um, so, okay, let me let me explain the, the idea behind the Stanley Parable, if you don't know what it is. Originally, it was a Half-Life 2 mod that was experimenting with uh, making fun of video games themselves. It does a lot of other things, but that's really what people peg it to the most. It's making fun of tropes in video games, like the illusion of choice. So you have a narrator that says, Stanley enters the right door. And you have two doors, one on the left and one on the right. And you can either follow the narrator and do what he says, or tell him to go fuck himself and do whatever you want. And the best part about this is the game doesn't stop. It doesn't say, oh, you, you can't do that. The narrator actually chastises you the entire <laughs> time you're playing. It's like, really... Really? Are you serious? There's a point in the game where you can climb up these stairs and throw yourself off a ledge, but you have to do it like six times to fully kill yourself. And the entire time, the narrator's like, is it that bad? Is my game really this bad that you need to kill yourself to get away from it? That's incredible. It's it's fantastic. I love when bre when games break the fourth wall. I, that's I this care. entire when it's, game. When yeah. it's tastefully done. I mean, yeah. there's times it's just like, really? But other times, like, that's good. Well, like in the middle of Metal Gear Solid. <laughs> Snake pressed the X button to climb up the ladder. <laughs> it's like, okay. <laughs> so, uh, three bucks, Stanley Parable. It is a walking simulator, but it's... Even if you hate walking simulators, it's not like that. It's actually the exact opposite of that. At the what the third of the cost of watching a movie in the theater? Yeah, you and it's just, got, you can play the Stanley Parable. So. It's got like seven endings or something, and yeah. they're all just fucking hilarious. <laughs> so yeah, pick it up. Uh, fire up Wikipedia after you've gone through it a couple times. You get bored uh, and play through the rest of the endings. Yeah. I think a few other call outs we had, just small, quick ones, just to get them out there. Borderlands, five bucks. Yeah, pick yeah. it up if you haven't played Borderlands. Undertale, five bucks. That's gotten a lot of. A lot of positive reviews. Undertale yeah. was amazing. Uh, Stardew Valley down to ten bucks. It's only a fifteen dollar game, so not super steep discount. Mm -hmm. But if you're on the edge or you've been kind of waiting, it's a good time to pull the trigger. Harvest Moon style, everyone's loving it. Um, I have to mention Rocket League. I know, but it's eleven ninety nine right now. I have not spent any more time in any other game than Rocket League. Not even close. Um, it's fun as soon as you start playing, and the more you play, if you want to get into it, it becomes incredibly competitive, and the skill ceiling is so high, um, it's fun the whole time. So it's not like one of those games where, like Dota, where the skill ceiling is high, but to get to the point where you're like, you get it, it's not as fun up until that point. Rocket League is fun the whole time. Yeah. It's, it's a fun party game with your friends, casually. 
the more you play, you start to learn how the physics work and you start getting the muscle memory in and then you can start doing things more intentionally and then it becomes a whole different sports type of competitive game where you're making intentional passes and plays. So um, I would recommend that for sure. I'm a noob and I have fun with Rocket yeah. League. The one thing I feel they did well was the way they set up their matchmaking to where when you first start, you're like, man, I'm not that good. And then you start like, oh, okay, I'm hitting these balls off walls. I'm starting to get really good. Yeah. And then it, the MMR adjusts, and all of a sudden you're like, oh, shit, is that guy flying? He yeah. can do that? <laughs> yeah. And then you'll eventually get to the point where you're, like, running up walls, jumping off, tapping the ball, getting mm -hmm. under it, boosting, dragging it across, yeah. and shit gets nuts. Yeah. But it's always tiered. Yeah. I feel like there's literal, like, you'll feel physical tears. Mm. And once you hit a certain tipping point, you'll see a whole new caliber of player enter your matchmaking. Oh, yeah. You and play and you're like, oh, I'm good. And then you, you face this guy that just stomps all over, their whole team stomps all over your team. You're like, man, he's really good. And then you look at the leaderboards and, you're, and he's like, there's these all these teams at the amateur level that will stomp all over that guy. And then there's all these good teams in the competitive scene that stomp all over those guys. And then there's the eight teams that made it to the land that stomp all over those guys. <laughs> and they're not even as good as they're going to be in, in another year or so. So I think there's Rocket always League something to learn. It's starting to hit its stride as far as esports goes. I hope so. Yeah. I mean, Dota just, I would say in the past year or so, hit that point where the meta was understood. People get what they're there for. Mm -hmm. They, you know, the skills have finally come online. I think we're starting to see the peak of skill in Dota. Mm -hmm. Where it's Rocket League, I think we've got another three years. But they're they're getting there, and it's yeah. really fun. To it was watch. built to be an esport game. It's, yeah. yeah, it's a sport game. Yeah, it is a sports game. It's soccer with cars that can fly and flip around, and it's more fun than that sounds. <laughs> so, so, so I don't know. That sounds see, pretty damn fun. When are we going to see Rocket League, the real life league? Oh, there's actually videos of people doing that already. <laughs> actually, there was videos of people doing that before the game came out. That's amazing. But With go-karts and beach bars? or like Full cars. Now, what happens when you, like, destroy someone? When you're boosting and uh -huh. you run into them and they explode? Yeah. I mean, yeah, do, do, do they respawn? No. There's, like, you a know. jet uh, jet ejection to get the guy out they of there. They don't do that part in real life. <laughs> That'd be great. They spawn a new car. You run over to it. Get in. Run well, over to what? Blown up. It's like Halo running into a new Warthog. Just don't get hit when you're on your way. I've got uh, two games I want to recommend in the Steam sale. Uh, if you're interested in kind of odd mechanics that are pretty fun, Downwell is a nice little indie game. Uh, check out the video. That's really all you need to know about it. Um, you jump down a well and you have gun boots that propel you and kill enemies oh, at the I same time. Oh, I saw that. That's kind of a retro... Yeah. It's pretty cool. Contra, but downward. <laughs> it's, it's pretty cool. <laughs> downward um, Contra. And if you want a space game with a healthy dose of style uh, and some cool mechanics that's a roguelike, check out FTL. Um, one of the best roguelikes that I got really deep into, uh, it's a game where your ship can catch fire, but you can open up the airlocks and evacuate the air and put out the fire. One of the great strategies that happened uh, it, that I read about is uh, you can seal off only those rooms that have people in them mm -hmm. and then keep your ship just wide open to space. Mm -hmm. So when people decide to board you, they, you know, teleport in and they start choking to death because there's no air. <laughs> And wow. then you get the upgraded doors to keep people wow. out so they can't just break <laughs> in. And you just watch as the invaders just suffocate in your ship. It's amazing. That's crazy. So FTL is great. It's got a fantastic soundtrack. Really cool mechanics. Check it out. I think that's... Any other games you guys can think of? I think that's pretty much it for the... But definitely check out the sale anyway. We probably missed a bunch of them. Yeah. I, I think we've got just a, a few quick news items uh, Valve was fined uh, by an Australian court because their terms of service were misleading to Australian gamers. Uh, in Australia, they've got a really nice set of consumer protection laws, which basically says you can reasonably expect a purchase, digital or not, mm -hmm. to be in working condition and to be of sufficient quality. Mm -hmm. Now, it's up to a judge to determine what sufficient quality means if it gets that far. Oh, God, it's honored too. But, not any particular game, Okay. but Valve's Terms of Service states, hey, if you're outside the refund period, go fuck yourself. <laughs> Those, that 
contract, that language in the, the terms of use that people have to agree to to use Steam, mm -hmm. just the language that they use is against the law in Australia. Because wow. they are misleading consumers about their rights under Australian law. Hmm. So Valve was fined. Let me let me grab the figure here. Um, dum -dum 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 -dum. It's good radio. Uh, they were fined three million dollars for nice. uh, for this breach here. Um, well, it was, it was two point one six in American dollars. Yes, two point one six million dollars USD, uh, and. Imagine that. Imagine those laws. So you buy Dishonored 2 on Steam, and you are guaranteed under Australian law for something to be relatively defect-free. Not perfect, but functional. Can Bethesda sell games there? I don't think legally they can. <laughs> They're all functional. <laughs> <laughs> Barely. Those are features. They're not bugs. <laughs> are you sure you're not a software developer? <laughs> Could be. So, uh, actually, one of the reasons that uh, we got Steam refunds in the current system at all mm -hmm. uh, is because many European nations mandate that refunds can be given for anything mm. um, within, you know, reasonable terms. Yeah. But Steam had to build a refund system for their European people. They figured, ah, it's too hard to maintain two bases. Well, we just have everyone have the same refund terms. Uh, but we'll, we'll see what... Uh, what happens to Steam in Australia. I'm sure it'll get interesting as time goes on. Um, and the Nintendo Switch specs were revealed, which is... Well, Eurogamer kind of leaked some stuff earlier, but people weren't 100% sure that it had a last-gen, like there's last-gen NVIDIA stuff in it. Oh, yeah. okay. Well, keeping it cheap, I'm sure. So we, we've got... Um, Undocked and docked specs, which is one thing that I expected but was fearing at the same yeah. time. Meaning that, yeah, the docks can give you some extra oomph, but it doesn't look all that bad. Yeah. So uh, it looks like CPU uh, is the same docked or undocked. GPU, they add just a little bit more, uh, probably to bump up the resolution to 1080. Something mm -hmm. to drive something bigger than the screen you have well, currently. So, once again, these are all speculations. As yes. of right now, this is not true. But the way they have this wrote up, <clears throat> it makes me kind of assume it's using a boost technology, similar to uh, Intel does with its core processors, yeah. where it recognizes uh, low load optimization for boosting. Um, because this reads essentially that it, while docked, the GPU can double processing speed. Because it goes from 307 megahertz to 769. Do we know if the Switch will support 4K? Because if it will, this makes perfect sense. If you're undocked, it's just got to push 720 from what has been rumored. Mm. But if it's docked and it needs to do 4K, it makes sense. I can't see them doing 4K. I can't either. Nintendo I, has yeah, never done that. Those types of games don't really demand for it that much either. Yeah. <clears throat> so we'll, we'll have to see what comes of that, but... Yeah, there's there's not a whole ton to go on. Uh, Valve has been continuing to patch Dota. Mm -hmm. um, so when the when Dota three came out, uh, people had complaints. It was mostly good, yeah. but uh, still today it definitely needs a performance patch because holy shit, I, jar I dropped half my frames. Oh wow, overnight. that's a big deal. Wow, it was really bad, and it's still really bad even on really powerful rigs. Oh, okay. Um, so it's, there's definitely some performance gains there, and I'm, mm. I'm sure they'll get to it. Valve always does that. Yeah. Um, I did but, get a chance to look into those some. My God. Even, like, I got more in-depth on those notes. Yeah. <laughs> it's just absurd. So these aren't necessarily gameplay patches. These are more little interface things here or there. Uh -huh. It's definitely coming together. Um, I think in the next two or three months... The interface will be finally locked down enough to call it, you know, this is final for this patch. Yeah. Which is really good because, you know, I got on after not playing for two days and shit was moved. And yeah. it really annoyed me. I was like, <laughs> where the fuck did that go? I was looking for the stacks. I need to do this thing and make a decision about my tree. Mm. It's it's all gone. It's all changed. Uh, but it's, it's getting there. They've It'll ruffled the feathers before, though, when they switched yeah. to the Source 2 engine. Yes. They initially did a split. You could do the beta if you want. And then they're like, you know what? Fuck it. Everyone go to the beta. 
and they were still working out bugs after they forced everyone over. Oh, okay. yeah. The, it's typical Valve fashion of, eh, it's kind of It'll ready. Be fine. <laughs> it doesn't have seatbelts, a windshield, or airbags, but it rolls, so everyone <laughs> pile in. Um, it's something cool. Uh, that's it's it's a little kind of Dota in house talk, but uh, EG, one of the bigger, one of the biggest Dota two teams right now, has announced that there will be no roster changes, uh, at least until the next major, which oh. is pretty unheard of for a team saying, yeah. "Hey, we just finished something, we're not shifting anything around." I like that's to good. see that. I like to see teams too. sticking together. Yeah. Because this constant movement of teams, it's great for the best players. Because they know, regardless of what happens, they're landing. Uh, yeah. For the most part. Okay, well team then... Team Secret got their shit rocked because it was a team of all-stars that all had ego issues. Yes, but yeah, what I'm saying, well, though, is they had a team. They yeah, landed a team. They did. It's your mid-level players who finally broke into a pro mm -hmm. scene, had a good event, got picked up by a big team, and then gets dropped the next month. Yeah, it's those kind of things where it makes you question the stability of a, this as a career unless you are incredibly top tier. Like, yeah, you're a professional Dota player and you're still working a second time job. Mm. So, I mean, it this kind of locking in is kind of what Overwatch is promising, which I think is yeah. what's going to offer them the staying power in the right. Um, That'll legitima uh, legitimize the scene, I think, having teams stick together. Uh they can actually build fan bases <laughs> instead of just individual player fan bases. You might have actual team fans that can keep that being be team nice. fans. That instead of being really like, nice. oh, no, my team broke up. Now who do I root for? Well, who did this person go to? Oh, they all went to different teams. So that's good. I, I think one of the things that I'd, I'd really like to see for all esports, not just Dota, mm -hmm. is um, you know, you've got kind of your minor league layer where you've got, you know, EG and Team Secret and Na'Vi, and you've, you've got teams that are just groups of players that say, yeah. we want to go team now. And they go and do, you know, tournaments and minor tournaments. And then you've got the major leagues, where you have the Chicago, the Chicago Evil Geniuses. And when you play for that, you play for the Chicago Evil Geniuses. And you will battle Los Angeles next week, because that's how things work in the majors. <laughs> and, and that way you can get the Valve-style everyone's happy we're all a hippie commune yeah mixed with the overwatch style of this is the nfl of esports and they need it they did yeah they really did. dota Absolutely. is big enough that they can put that kind of infrastructure around it yeah. now other games like rocket league and that they're still up and coming they can't yeah. quite pull that off right. in the next five years they could mm -hmm. but not currently i and dota 2 has enough following now another game that might be able to, but I don't think it has the fan base to validate the need for it, is something like CSGO. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. CSGO is still in this area of, yes, it's an eSport, yes, it's got fan bases, it doesn't have nearly the following it needs. I mean, the, yeah. the biggest CSGO tournaments are in, you know, a, a conference room. Yeah. The biggest Dota tournaments sell out Key Arena. Right. And have people outside around Key Arena filling up the lawn, watching it on projectors <laughs> on screens. So when I lived in Columbus, um, there was a CSGO tournament there, a pretty big one, had like a team like Liquid and some teams there. Mm -hmm. And the line to get in was, it was a decent line, but it was probably about 150 people waiting for the doors to open. Yeah. Hmm. So granted, probably That's as the day went, yeah. you probably ended up with maybe a thousand. Huh. That's still not bad. No, 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 no. Because, like I said, I don't see CSGO as a fan-watching one. And I think yeah. that's what Overwatch yeah. is going to have to fight. It's going to be, for everyone who plays it, and everyone's actually competitive about it, they'll watch a little bit. Yeah. But pull in the other people. Like, I'm not a great Dota player. I like watching Dota pros. It's pulling in, being able to do that. If Overwatch can pull that, they'll pull it off. And then hopefully Dota will follow suit because damn Dota could do that right. <laughs> yeah, they could. I would. I would love to see Valve take this on. So that's, uh, that's about it for the news, huh? Yeah, I, yeah it, it is. Um, I think um, we have a fact for the week. We do have a fact for the week. Uh, so this fact is brought to you by my new Pirate Bay coffee mug. <laughs> um, you so would. if you pirated Serious Sam three. They did something cool. They didn't lock you out of the game. They didn't, you know, call you names on Twitter uh, until you complained about the giant pink scorpion monster 
that followed you around levels uh, and killed you and was invulnerable. Oh my god. <laughs> so this That's excellent. This That's so cool. Creepy pink scorpion monster, hot pink scorpion, would follow you around everywhere and s senselessly slaughter you. <laughs> you could not kill it. And people would go to forums and they'd complain. They said, what the fuck is with this red dude following me around? I can't kill him. And they'd be like, well... Should have bought the game. Yeah, you should have bought the game. Because if you did, he wouldn't spawn. <laughs> That's awesome. That's good. It, I it like only, it when they get creative with stuff like that. It only lasted for a couple hours until pirates were like, oh, come on. And then they patched it out. Yeah. But still, fucking hilarious. Yeah. So uh, there, there's tons of anti-piracy measures like that, and they're all good. Just like uh, Game Dev Tycoon. Yeah. If you pirated Game Dev Tycoon, your games that your game developers were developing in Game Dev Tycoon would see all of their losses and revenue vanish because of piracy. <laughs> That's clever. <laughs> That's good. People would post on the forums, I don't, I mean, is there like DRM I can invest in mm -hmm. or something like that? Because people keep pirating my games and I can't get them to stop. And the game developer would respond, yeah, us too. <laughs> <laughs> that's so good. That's perfect. So yeah, that's that's your gaming fact of the week. Nice. I like that one. And with that, we will conclude our standard cast. Mm -hmm. If you would like to hear what we have to say about The Walking Dead, just stay on the channel for about another about five minutes tops. Yeah. Or um, if you're listening to this at a later time, just look at our channel and just grab the very next podcast you see. Yeah. Odds are that will be the Walking Dead section. Both will be on YouTube. You'll have an MP3 on the website, all that stuff. Uh, but bear in mind, this Walking Dead podcast will be full of spoilers. We're going Super to leave spoiler cast. no stone unturned. This is going to be the worst Walking milk Dead you'll ever drink. One. Yeah. It's the most spoiled ever. <laughs> and for that let's wrap up this cast and if you would ever like to uh send us your thoughts questions concerns or just tell us how generally terrible we are as individuals you can tweet at us at at 70 at 72 pc podcast you can write us an email at fanmail at 72 pinconnector.com you can find all of our streams and uh youtube links actually on our website 72 pinconnector.com and you can find us on YouTube at 72 Pin Connector. And with that, I think we're just going to wrap this cast. So, until next week, aim on. See you, everyone. Bye. We'll be back soon.